Good afternoon, I'm Machu Clint M. Brazil. This is my report. Screen share. Understand spam and phishing. What is spam? Spam is called junk mail for good reason. It, it's existed for almost as long as the internet itself as it means of selling products or services for a large market of buyers than have ever expressed interest in those products or services. After obtaining the email address of a huge number of individuals, spammers bulk send their offers hundreds or thousands at a time. Common types of spam include player chain forwards, coupons, adult contents, donations, solicitations, and unwanted newsletters. They are usually commercial in nature and not expressly malicious. Ang spam is, in short, parang nagsisend siya ng, ano, ng mga unwanted messages na hindi naman relevant dun sa'yo at hindi naman siya relevant sa life mo. Parang nagsisend lang siya ng mga advertisement. Kadalasan po advertisement and mga advertisement, advertisement and mga yung mga unwanted newsletters na hindi naman siya relevant dun sa ginagawa mo. Ads. These are the some examples of spam. Ads. Ads. This is one of the most common types of spam. I bet you've already received several unnecessary emails offering products and services such as weight loss pills and tennis offers. In many cases, it may be a scam but the offer may also be real. Dito na po pumapasok yung pagiging legitimate ng isang business. If, if alam mo naman na yung in-offer sa'yo is legitimate, pwede mo siyang masabing minsan spam or hindi. Pero kadalasan kasi, nagsisend lang sila na nagsisend ng mga unnecessary, unnecessary emails or messages sa'yo. Chain letters. Something bad will happen to you. This is ano, one of the most example. Usually, chain letters tell exciting and thrilling stories and persuade you to pass the message along under penalty of having something very bad happen to you. Nangyayari po ito kadalasan sa messenger. Doon po kasi yung pag di mo to shinare, babagsak. <laughs> yung mga ganun pong messages. Kadalasan po sa, ano siya, sa mga social media accounts natin. Email spoofing. Email spoofing spam is related to phishing scam. They happen when spammers or phishers try to fool you by impersonating someone you know or a company you have a relationship with. Sa spam naman, dito na pumapasok yung parang connections mo. Nagagamit na nila yung, mga, yung email mo sa mga, yung email mo na ginamit mo sa isang business Parang doon na nila na-access eh. Doon tapos ginagamit nila yung relatives mo or yung mga katrabaho mo sa work para makapag-send ng messages or emails sa'yo. Money scams. Here with spam messages with easy money promises such as Nigerian princesses, princess scheme. In, in this case, you apparently only have to lend a small amount of money to receive a big reward in the future. Um, dito sa Pinas, kadalasan nangyayari yan sa mga, sa mga, ano, yung mga katulong kasi madaming, ano, nahi, nahihikayat, nahihikayat na, ay, ay, ang pugi naman ito, nagsisend na mga dami, dami pics, and may mga dami accounts yun, parang dun, hindi, hindi nila sinisecure or hindi nila, hindi nila chinecheck kung legitimate ba yung tao na yun and yung account na yun. Malware warnings. If you receive an email warning you about about a malware inf infection on your device, such as ransomware or, vi or virus, this is probably a malware warning spam. Dito naman po pumapasok yung mga ini, yung may spam na yung mga antivirus na nagsisend ng mga unnecessary messages dito sa part ng computers and laptops natin.
Ito po yung mga example. You've won. Yan yung send ng $1,000 daw, $1,000 sa Walmart gift card. Verify your bank account dito naman po. Pag may mga kadalasan po kasi eh, may may mga link pero po para mas secure natin kailangan i-double check natin yung link kung private ba. Nakikita naman natin yung pag may may lock kung private or public or secured yung website na yun. Five simple ways you can fight spam and protect yourself. Never give out or post your email address publicly. Publicly. Dito na dapat wag natin ipopost yung mga email address natin and yung syempre mga information natin sa public and lalong lalo na sa social media. Think before you click. The most common thing na dapat alam natin bago tayo gumamit bago tayo gumamit ng social media or any platforms regarding to technology. Do not reply to spam messages. Dito naman yung tulad kanina yung may mga text messages na may mga link tapos kailangan nilang mag-reply ng mga email nila, wag na wag natin gagawin yun if hindi natin alam na secure yung account na yun or yung website na yun. Download spam filtering tools and antivirus software. Dito, ito kailangan naman natin ito lagi, eh, ito antivirus software. Pero itong filtering tools parang usually nakakas, meron ng ano yan eh, bakit? Pag nag Bumili. Avoid using your personal or business email addresses. Kaila, kung possible, kailangan magkaiba yung ginagamit natin sa social media na email address and yung business email address natin or student email address. What is phishing? Whereas spam is simply unwanted, phishing is expressly designed by a malignant actor to harm a company or individual by obtaining sensitive information. It often takes the form of a seemingly legitimate looking messages from a trusted sender. Phishing emails target banking, credentials, passwords, cash advances, or other information of value. Ident identity theft often results. Sign of phishing email include misspelled words, discrepancies between the language of links and the URLs they direct to, requests to personal information, forms within emails, highly emotional or charged language. Ang phishing naman, ito yung, kumbaga, i-rate natin yung dalawa, yung spam and phishing, mas delikado to eh. Kasi dito na yung pumapasok yung mga money laundering and yung paggamit ng identity theft nga na tinatawag natin. Phishing emails examples to help you identify phishing. Recognize phishing email scams, gra grammatical errors, low resolution logo, odd URL. Dito yung logo nila. Usually po, pag may gantong, pag may nag-try ng Instagram mo or nag someone login ng Instagram mo, hindi naman sila usually nagsasend ng email sa'yo. And hindi, wala silang redirect na sign in and magbibigay agad sila ng code even na hindi ka naman nag-access nun. Kaya masyado siyang PC or <laughs> hindi siya kapanipaniwala. Pishing email example, account temporarily suspended. Dito naman pumapasok yung mga trust fund natin and yung mga bank accounts and yung mga ito nga po yung ito dito isang example kailangan natin i-secure yung ano yung account natin and for sure para ma, para nga ma-check natin kung legitimate ba yung website na pupuntahan natin i-double check muna natin ulitin ko po i-double check muna natin yung account if kung secure if king hindi if kung hindi naman pwede natin silang i-report. Phishing email Netflix phishing scam. Please update. These are the examples po. Yan, pag nag update ng account kasi kadalasan nagse-send sila ng e ng email sa iyo pero your hold hindi siya kapani paniwala ang dami niyang ang dami niyang error sa grammar pa lang. These are the ways you can protect yourself in phishing attempts. Knowing common signs of phishing scams. Siyempre, 
Tulad nga nung mga binigay ko kanina example, alamin mo dapat kung legitimate ba yung website and dapat hindi ka nagsishare ng mga information mo sa public and alamin mo mapapansin naman yan sa mga logos na ginagamit nila and yung mga grammar nila eh, if, if, and emotional yung mga words na ginagamit nila. Not providing personal information via email. If you're unsure if an email is legitimate, always refer to the sender's website. Ayan nga, double check natin lagi yung website kung legitimate ba or, or hindi. Not opening messages, messages from unknown senders. Uh, dito naman, huwag tayo basta-basta mag-open ng mga messages na lalong-lalo na hindi naman natin kilala, kilala and huwag tayo pipindot ng log in your account here and send me your password. Huwag tayo gagawa ng mga ganun bagay. Varying your password. Kailangan yung password natin, hindi lang yung password 123. Kailangan yung matibay. Kunyari, yung may big letter, may mga numbers. Ikaw ang bahala, basta yung complicated, yung, pero matatandaan mo siyempre. Em, employing an up-to-date antivirus solution. Yan. What is the difference between spam and phishing? The difference between spam and phishing is that while they both may be inbox clogging nonsense, only one phishing is actively aiming to steal logging credentials and other sensitive data. Is spam is a tactic? is a tactic for hawking good and services by sending uns unsolicited emails to bulk lists, while annoying spam is not nearly as dangerous as phishing, which tries to trick as a user in divulging sensitive information. Yun nga, tulad ng sinabi ko po kanina, yung phishing, is a, ano siya, delikado kasi credentials na yung kinukuha mo, sensitive information mo, password, emails, na maaaring magamit sa mga magamit bilang identity theft or maaari kang makuhaan ng pera. Ang um, while naman dun sa spam, ginagamit, kadalasan ginagamit siya sa pang po-promote ng mga products and parang makahikayat lang. Pero syempre, iba pa rin yung ano ka, ligtas and safe. I will show you videos regarding to how to stay away from this kind of stuff na alam naman natin hindi makakatulong sa atin. I will stop share video. Ayan. Most of the stuff you find on the web is good and can be useful. But just as in the offline world, you also need to watch out for the occasional bandit. In the offline world, if a stranger offered you some candy, you'd know better than to take it. The same principle applies online. If someone offers you a discount coupon, asks you to take a survey to win a free smartphone, or tells you that you want a trip to Hawaii, you should be suspicious of the content and the intention behind it. Social engineering is a technical term for content that tricks you into revealing personal information, like your login details or credit card number. Social engineering attacks can happen over email, ads, or web pages. Some attacks can be pretty easy to spot. Remember the rich prince who wanted to transfer millions of dollars to your account? But others can be sophisticated and pretty convincing. So let's talk about some steps you can take to avoid online scams. One of the most common ways to trick users is through email. Social engineering emails look like they're from a legitimate source, but they're not. For example, an email may claim to be from a bank and say that your banking account has been compromised and that you must quickly email them your password to avoid having the money stolen. It's important to remember, never send personal information over email unless you're absolutely sure who you're sending it to. Attackers will use every trick in the book to make you believe that the address in an email is legitimate. 
faking the from address to make it look like it's from someone you know. So don't use the reply address in the message unless you are sure who the sender is and don't click on links in the email. Instead, open a new window and type in the official website of the bank or company in question and find the contact address. Social engineering can also happen when you visit a web page. Scammers will generate a sense of urgency and create websites that look similar to sites that you already use. That's why, when visiting a web page, pay close attention to the page's URL because attackers will often make this URL look similar to that of a genuine site. Before you enter any personal information on a web page, check the URL to make sure it starts with HTTPS and is preceded by a locked padlock icon. Other types of scams can trick you into downloading malware or unwanted software that may harm your device or steal your personal information. A website or an ad cannot detect if your machine is compromised. If you see a message while browsing saying that your computer is infected and asking you to download software, you should be suspicious. Remember to always download software from reputable sources. Now you know what social engineering is, as well as steps you can take to avoid online scams. And remember, if something looks too good to be true, it probably isn't. Ay nga po, nag-share ako ng video about sa mga tips ng to avoid spam and phishing. Usually pinakita dun kung paano natin malalaman kung legitimate yung isang website. Nagpakita siya ng mga examples tulad nga nung pag may lock yung web, yung URL ng website. And pag nagsisimula siya sa HTTPS. And syempre, as a fellow student, ang mapapayo ko lang, kailangan maging responsible tayo sa ating mga ginagawa. Usually sa mga social media kasi nangyayari yung mga identity theft. Kaya kailangan mag-ingat tayo, maging responsible tayo sa ating mga information, maging sensitive din tayo sa sarili natin at sa ibang tao. Yun lang po, salamat.